Hey everyone, welcome back to another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. You're going to want to make sure you press that subscribe button because I put out a lot of videos that many drummers have found very helpful and I know you will too. Uh, so press subscribe and press the bell notification button to make sure that you get notified when I put out a new video, which is usually every week. So I'm really excited to have my good friend and colleague at the University of North Texas, Jose Aponte, uh, do a lesson on clave for us. Um, the lesson is spectacular. You're going to want to watch the whole thing because it's very informative. Um, and he gives great demonstrations. Now, Jose has played with an amazing host of artists and groups, including the incredible conga player Giovanni Hidalgo, um, the wonderful jazz steel pan player Andy Norell, uh, the wonderful group uh, Batacumba from Puerto Rico, um, Carlos Guedes, the incredible jazz harp player, and of course, Nestor Torres, the, an incre incredible flautist. In addition to those incredible artists and groups that he's played with, he also has some really exciting current projects that he's a part of, including playing with the groups um, Diaspora, um, E-Cuba Quartet, and a group that is coming out with a new CD this year, Brazuca, and you're going to see some clips from that. And also, he has a CD of his own that he released this year called From Here from there you definitely want to check that out i'll put i'll put all the links and all that information down below um, on top of that he leads the latin jazz lab band at the university of north texas he directs the brazilian ensemble the afro-cuban ensemble and teaches drum set lessons this man is bad and he's an incredible drummer incredible artist um, incredible percussionist and a great person great teacher you're going to learn a lot so you want to Check out the whole thing, the whole thing, and learn about clave. Okay? So without further ado, here is the wonderful Jose Aponte. Hello everyone, Jose Aponte here and we are going to uh, talk a little bit about what is the clave concept. Clave is a flow that you heard here before. I'm going to play a little bit so you can see how it sounds like. One, two, and one, two, e, o. Oh. Clave means key, and it's a foundation rhythm in which everything is going to be constructed. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to play a style, I'm going to replicate a style of rumba, wawanko, on the drum set for you. So I'm going to start with the clave foundation. So. So what I'm doing there is a function of probably four or five people, right? Uh, and replicate that, replicating that rumba feel, that rumba wawanko feel into it. But if you notice, that bass, that foundation is going to determine many things. It's going to determine where I place those voicings. It's going to determine how I play in different situations in terms of improvisation. And it's going to determine functions, you know, this player, this player do this in this side of the clave. These two sides, let me talk about that a little bit. The two side and the three sides, pretty simple. This one side, they have two notes. One, two, and one, two, e, four, one. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four. Right? The two side and the three side has three notes. One. Two and one, two, e, o, oh, one, two, e, four, one, two, and three, ah, uh, two, three, four, one, 
two, three. One, two, three. That two uh, rhythms in two bar phrasing, it creates different situations. It, cre it creates tension and release. The, side, the two side is based on quaternal. One, two, three, four. So that two side is emphasizing quaternals. The three side, one, two, and three, four, and, or it's in the rumba case, in the song case will be one, two, and three, four. So one, two, and three, four in the, in the song clave, in the case, in the rumba clave case, one, two, and three, four, and, right? That actually delineates upbeats. So you have a situation of tension and release. So reviewing. You have a structure that is going to be the foundation, and then you have also a structure that is based on two, two uh, approaches, downbeats and upbeats. Uh, there's also another situation that we're going to discuss later, which is you can place the three side before. You can go one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, or one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, one. And you actually tell a Cuban to play clave. They never start with the three, <laughs> with the two side. They they always start with the three side. You go clave. Okay, one, two, and one, two, three. One, two, and three. three. Right? But when they start singing, you notice something that happens. One, one, two, and one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. Yo me enteré que tú andas diciendo. You see how I enter after the three side? One. Yo me enteré que tú andas diciendo que eres un palo, mi amigo Julián. So, where is one? Right? If you listen to the melody, one for you will be when the melody starts, right? But they already start three. That's called clave direction, and we're going to talk about that later. But I wanted to make you aware of it. So to start, Afrocentric music uh, is based on the relationship between duple and triple subdivision. So what I mean by that is that you're going to have a pulse. So one, two, and one, two, e, four, one, two, right? You got that? And then to that pulse, you have two interpretations. You have the duple, and, and, and then you have the triple. So two notes per pulse, three notes per pulse. Duple, Double. So that creates a tension and release again, right? And and the approach of how music is going to feel. There's a very famous six A feel uh, flow that it, that you probably know because you heard in uh, a lot of of, of jazz too, and. Uh, it feels it's, it's goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Oh, we did put the bass drum on it. That feel is used in Bembe and many other and other styles, and that's what uh, Bembe is a Cuban 6A style. But that comes from Africa, and in Africa, many nations use tend to use that flow. So the story goes that with the influence of all these African nations, it's something very important to mention. They put it in one place, they start interacting with each other, and they start modifying. Uh, this flow according into the circumstances, the cultural circumstances, and according to the, the music that they are being influenced by it, right? And specifically, uh, Western European music. So, from one of the one of the treatment is that from this flow, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> if you take that flow and you start eliminating the middle notes, you essentially had this. Mm -hmm. 
Sounds familiar? So you have a clave feel or clave flow on three on triple subdivision. Right? So from there, from the 6A that you know, it modifies to this. So I'm going to do that change for you. So you have an interpretation of clave, a triple uh, interpretation, triple subdivision interpretation of clave from the same pulse. So the evolution from that was that now you got the same interpretation of, of the same interpretation of that 6A built flow into a duple uh, interpretation. So now you're going to change the way you approach those notes into a duple interpretation. So from this You went into the triple. Right? Now that is changed traditionally from this flow or this son sonic texture of the cowbell, the metal texture, into a more two sticks version of the sound of the wood sound of the clave. In this case, I'm going to replicate it with the jam block that I have here. So, right, so one, two, and one, two, E, O. Right? There was another use that there was used also in a style called Jambu, which is moved that anode 4 into 4, but it also was denominated, it was classified as son, the style of son or Cuban son, used this clave interpretation, which is moving that anode 4 to 4. So now instead of 1, 2, and 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, oh. Now you got one, two, three, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, right? One, two, three, four, so see, one, two, three, four, let's see. Do this. Still on three. To this, to this, right? So it is not that it is four patterns or four claves. It's one clave concept. If you're playing something that is derivated for from son, like for example, uh, cascara on son clave, then you can apply son clave on it. One, two, and one, two, eight, oh. Right, especially when you play uh, salsa format from the 70s and 80s, and, and you got that kind of approach. If you play it a more and more than salsa kind of feel, then the Cubans start using more of a rumba clave into it. Right? So now you need to know a little bit of the repertoire how to apply it too, right? So, but you can also use rumba clave if you're playing rumba. So the same example that I gave you. One, two, and one, two, e, oh. Also in improvisations like 
two and one two e o. Right, and there's famous drummers like Horacio Hernandez and and Alex Acuna did it way in the 70s that he saw like putting all the clave situation uh, on the left foot and we keep developing from all those masters right so hopefully this will help you understand how the clave function develop into what we have today so thank you for listening and thank you for uh, being here with me today and I hope that this will be very helpful to you I'll see you next time